Chapter 7 Transverse Shear Part A Concept of Shear in, in a Section Just consider we have an I shaped section and it's handling a vertical shear like this if you want to observe the shear flow on on this structure it's it's going to be like comfort due to a vertical shear it just goes to, uh, comes to each other at the top flange dives down to the web and then goes diverge from each other again to the bottom flange so if we have an i-shaped beam this is an i-shaped section or beam these are flanges so this is top flange this is the bottom flange and this is the web and that's the effect of shear distribution in, in a I-shaped beam mm -hmm. and if we do have a rectangle section you can happen to a vertical force like what you can see here at its cross section and if you want just want to take in a small sample of element out and observe that was not a good color for for that and if you want to observe the small element of that that's like the effect of shear on on that a small element so that's a one of them it's a longitudinal one and the other one is transverse shear one can say transverse shear stress is always accompanied or, or associated with longitudinal so transverse shear stress all the time comes with a longitudinal stress mm -hmm. and how is that if you look at an, an element you can see both of those stresses in in different directions so the one here uh, parallel to to the cross section or or the transverse shear and the one at uh, goes like a frictional force or our longitudinal shear mm -hmm. and all the time with a transverse shear we do have a longitudinal shear as well let's go and derivate the formula for shear so just consider we have a an element and in terms of a length of dx and we apply a bending moment at, at the two sides so the first part or uh, the closer to at the left part of the uh, element we do have a m and these are the effect of stresses due to bending and at the other side that's m plus delta m due to the length of delta x so that's a travel distance of delta x hmm? And if we just want to consider the effect of a shear on on a section at 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 the top so for this part of the section like we call that a prime we want to the whole shape is a the area of the whole uh, element is a and this a small portion of that is a prime and we want to see the effect of shear on that uh, small top section so if we develop the equations of of uh, uh, in x direction summation of forces at x direction should goes to zero 
and that gives us a sigma prime dA prime so minus sigma dA prime so if you call this one minus T tau this is tau which applies at the surface like a, a shear and which is the, the dimension of that plate is is this is dx and let's call this one t so the shear applies the shear applies to a rectangle by a an area of t times dx isn't it so it just says a forces at the end sigma prime times dA minus forces at the beginning minus what we have at the center in terms of shear should goes to zero we don't have any other forces there so in that case and that sigma or sigma prime both of them are due to uh, a a momentum moment so sigma prime it, it just goes for the the section at the end because we just consider this is the positive direction so and that's do you remember we say sigma due to bending is m by over uh, m m y over i that's sigma x do you remember that so in that case our our sigma is due to bending and for for the section at the at the right that's m plus dm over i mm -hmm, times y da prime minus m over i y which is again this is sigma this is sigma prime mm -hmm, minus tau times the area da prime is equal to zero let's make it a bit cleaner and then if we just cancel uh, cancel the term um, with each other and just rearrange the equation we reach to a simpler simplified version of that that's dm over i out of integration then integration of y da prime da uh, da prime uh, is equal to tau times da prime so in that case solving the equation for tau it's getting an interesting result that says tau is 1 over i t 1 over just bring this t to the denominator i 1 over i t dm over i out of integration then integration of y da you remember we talk about if we dm over dx isn't it shear so if the area under shear goes to be moment then the derivation of moment is definitely shear so dm over dx derivation of moment over over an a, speci a specific length is is the shear so we can replace that with shear and what is the other part that's a first moment of an area integration of y da prime it just goes by a first moment of our area and do you remember we call that q or s so if we replace the equation for tau it just says this transverse shear is nothing but a shear shearing force times first moment of an area over a second moment of inertia times the, the thickness of the plate we are working with so this is length that was dx and this is thickness of our our our, our cross section so let's let's see that on an example so just consider a 
Example one, determine the distribution of shear stress, shear stress, transfer shear stress, distribution of shear is transfer shear over, over the cross-sectional area. Mm -hmm. So if we have a rectangle with the length uh, of the dimension of B and H and handling a sh shearing force of V, one and all we, are, we already know the transverse shear equation is VQ over IT. Mm -hmm. Let's approach our problem. So this is our transverse shear and the interesting part we'll get back to it but just in case they are smaller arrows at the top getting a little bit bigger and goes to maximum at center reducing and just goes by again smaller amount so by just by the figure one can say the maximum shear might happen at center let's 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 verify that so if we call the half of the height by c and tau is vq over it so t is simply b mm -hmm. because the they are interested at this area at, at this thickness of our cross section which a transverse shear shear applies on this in thickness and i for a, a Uh, a square, no, not a square, with a rectangle with the element uh, with the dimensions of B and H is 112 base cube height. We just re simply re replace the second uh, or moment of inertia in denominator and T goes by again the base, which is B, and V is should be provided because we, we just we are just provided with a numeric value of shear. And we just need to calculate Q, which is the first moment of our area. Let's let's attempt our problem. So, and if we just replace a value of B by, uh, sorry, value of H by QC. So if H over Q is equal to C, the whole height is 2C. So a 12 base times 2 C in parentheses is uh, cubed. It just gives me two thirds of B C cubed. Let's see how I can calculate Q, which is A prime, which is if we just consider this amount of area, which I call that A prime. Uh huh. And this is the centroid for A prime. And this is Y bar prime, which is the centroid of A prime to the centroid of our whole area. And let's see how we can calculate. In, in that case, A prime is B mm -hmm, times this is C minus Y. So this, this is C, this is Y, this is C minus Y. Mm -hmm. So the A prime area is B times in parentheses C minus Y and Y bar prime is just if from here to here is Y and from here to here is C. So isn't it uh, the centroid is the average of these two? So one is C, the other is Y. C plus Y over 2 is our Y bar prime. So simply our Q is A prime times Y bar prime and 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 uh, what is that? It just says uh, you if you just replace them in the First moment of inertia equation, first moment of area equation, it gives you Q is equal a half of B times C squared minus Y squared, both in parentheses. If I replace in that in my uh, 
main equation i i have everything tau is equal to vq over it so that's v times q which is a half of b times c squared minus y squared over two third of b c cubed times b if you simplify the equation it just gives you tau is two third of v over a in parentheses one minus y squared over c squared and it just says if you consider the equation if you put y equal to zero so my y starts at here uh -huh. if you put y is equal to zero it just stands at the center and that gives me that goes by tau maximum one and half v over the area mm -hmm. and that's also verifies my the trend of our she transverse shears arrow which just says they are they are getting bigger and bigger as you travel from both end to the center and that's again tau maximum happens when c is equal to zero sorry that's y equal to zero so that's center so if y is equal to zero it means we are standing at the center so that's tau maximum and this is the distribution of of shear transverse shear intensity so tau maximum for a rectangular cross section is a one and half v over the area thank you